Hi, I'm Bill Black from Spirit River. It's my pleasure to teach you how to tie a blooming olive. A blooming olive, as you can see here, is a dry fly and it imitates abatis or many of the common mayflies found in the northern hemisphere. This is a very, very, very common hatch throughout the country and um, anglers will use these, fly fishermen will use these to catch trout everywhere. Um, this is the kit that Spirit River sells. In this kit are all the materials to tie this fly. In fact, I've laid all these materials out with a second kit here. Uh, and what I'd like to do is teach you how to tie this little blueing olive mayfly. It's actually a relatively easy fly to tie. People tend to make this out to be tougher than it really is. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with your hook. We're going to put it in the vise. You don't want to put your hook point into the vise because uh, you can damage your point. We're going to apply our thread over the top as we always do. What we're going to do now is we're going to put on some wing tips or wings and we do that with um, uh, these hen hackles right here. You pull out two that are matching like this. Uh, what we want to do is we want to put them back to back so that they have a slight flare to them. You can kind of see that uh, we need these about the length of the we want these about the length of the shank of the hook. We want the tips to match up. We're going to tie these by going up between the fingers and back down. And then I wind my thread backwards and then before I let go I nip it. That gives me a nice clean clear little base there. Next I pull those feathers up and I take three or four wraps in front so they stand up and then I split them with my fingers but I also split them with my thread. I do what's called a little figure eight and that's how you do your wings. These wings should be about the length of two times the gape or actually probably about the length of the, uh, the shank of the hook. Okay now I've put a little thread underbody on there and we're going to take one of these hackles. This is a rooster hackle um, and we're going to I've stroked it numerous times to get the feathers sticking straight out because if they're straight here, when I pull them off, you'll have a nice, straight, even, fibered tail. Next, I want that tail to be about one and a half times the gate. I can tie it in, and if you ever tie it in short, which a lot of times I'll do, I just let the tension up a little with my bobbin and pull it out to right where I want it. So. These have a fairly long tail. I'm going to put it right about there. Okay, there you go. Now we've got our wings divided and upright. We've got a tail made out of a stiff rooster hackle. You don't want to use soft materials. Next, I've taken the bag of dubbing that was in this tying kit. I nipped off the corner and it serves as a little dubbing dispenser. You can just pull out just exactly what you need. The rest of the material stays clean. It's a really nice little trick to use. Uh, by the way, I was, I was the one that invented the dubbing dispenser. And you can buy a dubbing dispenser that has 10 or 12 colors in it from us. So you can tie these flies in a lot of different uh, colors if you want. Now I want a really fine tapered body. And what I mean by that is I want it to start small at the tail. And as I go forward, I want to cover about half this shank right here with this olive dubbing. That's why this is called a blue wing olive, blue wing olive body. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to put on a hackle. You, you've got various hackles in the kit. They're in different sizes. What you want to do is you want to measure them. Make sure that they're, um, they stick down about one and a half to two times the hook shank. Let's have a look and see what this one is. That one's too short. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go back to this one here. And this is a dry fly hackle. What I'm going to do on this saddle, because I'm only using one saddle, most of the time I'll tie it into the back and wrap forward. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this in right up here in front. I'm going to fold back my stem a little bit and trap that so the hackle will never come loose. And I'm going to start wrapping the hackle backwards right next to each other, right behind the wings there. 
I'm going to go back a few and then I'm going to start weaving it back and forth. Okay, now it's ready to be tied off. I'll grab my bobbin and I'll go around once, two, three, four times. And I'll take my scissors and I'll nip it. Keep this hackle that's very expensive and hard to come by. You can get on a, on a great big long one like this, you can get three or four flies off of it. What I'm going to do now is I'm pulling everything back here and taking a couple uh, wraps to secure all that material. And then I take my thumbnail and I press all of that back. That allows me the room and space to put a nice little head. Now notice I don't use a whole lot of thread. Now's the time to put a little cement on this. And this cement will, will be wound on there it goes. And it zips right into the the wing. And every time I pull on that, because these hooks are relatively light wire because it's a dry fly hook. I always um, make sure that I don't twist it. You want your hook to remain strong so you don't want to bend it much. And I always cinch that up when I do a half hitch or a whip finish. Leave my scissors open and nip it. And then I'll take it out of the vise and I'll make sure that all the hackle looks good. Uh, there's no weird little hair sticking out of the front or the back. And um, there you go. There's a beautiful little blue wing olive. And I want you to look around for Spirit River materials. They're in quality shops throughout the country. It's been my pleasure to tie a blue wing olive for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.